hello and welcome to my channel so this video is all about my most favorite person if you was to ask me who my most favorite historical woman was this would be her and i know this is going to sound weird but the reason she is my most favorite is because i really admire the level of revenge she went to when her family was wronged so this video is all about saint olga of kiev so olga was born towards the beginning of the 900s she was born in pleskov and was possibly of viking descent she married igor the ruler of kiev and rus and they had one son together so Igor would go around to all the different tribes in his territory to collect monthly tributes offered them. But there was one tribe called the Drevlions who thought that Igor had taken too much money offered them. So they ambushed him on his way back and killed him by bending two birch trees down and then tying his feet to these bent down trees and then letting the trees go so they flew up and ripped him in half. They then buried him outside of the walls of their city. So Igor and Olga's son became the ruler of Kiev and Rus but because he was still a child Olga became regent. Prince Mao who was the ruler of the Drev Lions decided that Olga couldn't possibly be regent all on her own she was just a woman after all and that she would be much better with a man by her side so he proposed marriage to her even though he had just killed her husband he asked her to marry him and to his surprise Olga seemed interested in this so she asked Mao to send 20 of his best men to her in Kiev so that they could discuss the marriage. So Prince Mao did this, he sent the men to Olga but when the men got there they were kind of cocky and what they wanted was they wanted to be carried through the streets of Kiev from their place up to Olga's palace in these Viking boats that were being carried by Olga's men and Olga agreed to this. So the next day Mao's men climbed into their boats, Olga's men carried them above their heads and they carried them um, all the way through Kiev and straight into these massive pits that Olga had dug the night before and then they were buried alive. So Olga wrote back to Prince Mao and she said that these marriage negotiations are going really well, I really want to come and see you. Can you please send some more of your men to me to escort me back to you? Um, Prince Mao was like, get in there. So he agreed and he sent more of his men to Olga. Now, when these men arrived, Olga goes to them, you look pretty tired, you're a bit dirty from all the traveling, why don't you use my bathhouse to freshen yourself up? And the men agreed to this, but once they were all inside the bathhouse, Olga had the doors locked and then set fire to the place, burning them all alive. Olga then sent word to Prince Mao saying that she was coming to his capital city of Iskarasan and that when she was there she was going to set up camp outside the city walls and then have a little memorial there for her husband by where he was buried and would Prince Mao and some of his men like to come along. So Prince Mao agreed to go along to this memorial for her husband and when they got there Prince Mao and his men got really really drunk where Olga and her men only pretended to get drunk they stayed quite sober so then when Prince Mao and his men were just so drunk Olga ordered her men to kill them all so the citizens of Iskarosan were really worried about what was going to happen to them so they offered Olga all this honeys and furs as a way of saying please don't attack us it was really nothing to do with us so then they seemed quite relieved when Olga said to them don't worry about your honey or fur just give me three pigeons and two sparrows from each house so the citizens did this but then Olga had pieces of sulfur tied to the legs of each of these birds and then the sulfur was lit and the birds were let go so that they flew back to the rafters of the houses where they had come from and they 
burnt the city down. So Olga managed to bring the Drivlians and all these other tribes around the area under her control within a few short years. She converted to Christianity and took the Christian name of Yelena. Olga died on the 11th of July 969 and then in the 13th century she was made a saint by the Russian Orthodox Church. So that was the story of Olga of Kiev. She's one of my most favourite people ever. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!